An adult humour? Most of us in Britain live in towns and cities. We only ever come to the countryside to get away from it all, and we really won't want to live there. But I've come to meet someone who believes that our modern way of living is the cause of everything that's gone wrong with Britain today. I'm the award-winning journalist Gary Bellamy. For the last few years, I've been talking to the people of Britain on my award-winning phoning program, Down the Line. But I thought it was high time I got out of my cosy little studio and actually spoke to you lot face to face as I meet Bellamy's people of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting this. Jason Laughing Waters has rejected our modern Western values and embraced an older set of beliefs. I believe in the stars and the moon, the trees and all that, you know? The ley lines, all that kind of shit. But these stones, Gary, they were here five and a half thousand years ago. Yeah. Before all the great religions, and three and a half thousand years before Jesus Christ. Yeah. What does that tell you about the earth? Mm. What does that tell you about man? Does he have any answers to what's gone wrong with British society? This is the only way I can live. Mm. This is how I am. I am in nature. You mm. know what I mean? I can't no. be like you, the way you live. The majority of people spend their days and their nights sitting in the box, looking at a box, yeah. going to work, cars, driving around like little beetles, going nowhere. My girlfriend introduced me to the best-selling books of Gerhard Winkel, spiritual guide, guru and healer, who offers many solutions to the problems in the world today. My girlfriend, Michaela, has got all your books, and I downloaded your CD, uh, Deep Relaxation Therapies, and I listen to it all the time. Although I've never actually got to the end, because it's so relaxing, I always fall asleep. The environment I work in, media, journalism, it's a very, very stressful environment. And relaxation is very, very important for me because people can be very, very bitchy. You find, you know, the knives are out all the time. They're waiting for you to make a mistake. So you're always having to watch your back. So a lot of the time I do come home and try to relax, which is difficult because lately I've had slight sort of itchy skin. The doctor says it could be hives, but the less said about that, the better. So anyway, let's just start by discussing um, how long have you been in Britain? Hello. Hel hello, I'm in. Where do you live? Well, I, I, well I'm not going to say. Why not? Well, because I don't want people to know where I live. Why? Because I don't, I don't want to be burgled. People might see this and they think, they think I'm not in. They might come and burgle my house. I think if I did find someone in my house, and I'd attack them, I'd be like a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, yeah? And I'd lock my jaws so tight, yeah? And yeah. they wouldn't know I'd hit them. Because I don't like that. Oh, it just makes me you sick. calm down, mate. It's not happened. Do you know what I mean? Well, I suppose you you've got nothing to be burgled here, just a couple of candles and a blanket. You're exactly. right. Exactly. You don't have to worry about it. No, I don't. No. I wouldn't put myself in that position. No. They want you to be like that. You've chosen that path, it makes yeah? Me so angry. Of material. Possession and it's made you violent. It's not about material possession. No one can take it's my home. Me. I don't have nothing. It's my home. How dare someone come in and go through Makeda's knicker drawers and tear anything around? And this is a per she wears them. She's worn them. And some no. man going through looking for jewellery, photographs. I don't. I don't agree with it. I'm not having it. I, you know, I would kill them. The lot. I left Jason to go and meet someone who was actually forced to leave the city and move to the country because of the rising levels of crime on Britain's streets. Ah, oh, hello, Bal. Oh, hello there. Gary Bellamy, nice, oh, to, nice to meet you. Nice there, to meet you. Cameras. Hello, you're okay. Yes, I'm just lacing this shoe up before because I said I would have it done. Um, just Put it down there, thank you. Mm. You can leave that. Remind me. Yeah. yeah. So I was just about to say, first of all, I'd start by saying uh, Baal is quite an interesting name. Where, where's that from? Well, people say that. People assume that it was from Romain. Do I speak into this camera there? Yeah, you talk to me. Right. Your eyes are the camera, as it were. Yes. yes. Yeah. So. No. So, so yeah. So no. your name? Where's your name come from? Uh, Baal. Well, mm. B A A L. Uh, people assume it comes from uh, Romania. But mine was actually just initials B A A L, the British American Asphalt League, yeah. which my father set up about 75 years ago. Right. Uh, he worked within the asphalt industry mm. and uh, I never looked back. <laughs> oh, good. We moved here about 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, we've been living in. Uh, do I look in the. No. No, because you look there. No. I wondered if, no. Uh, we moved there about 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice handle. Yeah. We've been living in quite a large city. 
we thought we really needed to get out, and hence we moved to uh, to Amersham, which is a very nice. Would you like to sit down? Okay. Now, uh, please, please sit anywhere you like. So anywhere, anywhere you anywhere like. Anywhere, I'll sit no, here. No, not there. No, that's my chair. She's got three kids. Have you? Yeah, she had more before she was eighteen. And there's a, there's a good argument for that, isn't it? Because at least you can then live your life and have more before you're 18. Yeah. Last week, I met Tulsa Kensgrove and her mates. Young, sassy, and out for a good time. Oh, dude, oh, 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 I'll tell you what, Gail, they're the worst, aren't they? Who? Birds these days, they're out of control, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, make me right, Gail, they start mm. all the trouble, mm. you know? Right, they do. Oh, I, know, I give you that back all the time. Men are useless, men are shit. You can't do that, you mm. can't do this. Mm. They're, oh, we're better at that, we're better at this. We're, you ever go back, what do they do? <sighs> don't they? And I'll tell you what, I know there's some of them are so lippy, aren't they? They're so gobby. That, I mean, that fucking foul mouth girl, that is disgusting what comes out of their mouths. Mm. Right? Yeah? Yeah. I mean, if this was the 70s, we wouldn't tolerate that. Shut up, stop that, get back in the kitchen, get clean the ass up, right? Mm. Yeah, and don't not... let them drive, gal. They <laughs> don't know what they're bleeding doing. Do you, know, you see them at the junctions. Oh, shall I pull out? Shall I go back? I'll tell you what, you daft tart. Put your bleeding mobile phone down. Stop talking to your bleeding mates about shopping, right? Mm. Concentrate on the road. But still, park the bleeding car, if you can, right? Get out and get home. Not all women you are. You know I'm right, gal. No, I'll tell not... you what, bring back hanging. You, you ask me, Vin, how long? I am living in in here in Britain. Well, and then, uh, what my answer to you would be that I am always been here, and conversely, I have never been here. Perhaps for you it is a concept that is not that easy to grasp at the moment. But when you breathe. Then you're understanding we are here also and we are there. And we are there and also maybe even around the corner. But when you have learned to adapt and become conscious, enlightened, then, wow, the whole, the whole thing is open. As I, I said in, in my uh, book, the sphere of wow. Is this the kind of woman you want to end up with? Yes. Really? Yes. 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 Oh, you're just as bad as them. Take it off. It's boring now. Now, fuck off now. Go. Goodbye. Now you live in an area which is kind of in the countryside. Have you, do you live here because you don't want to live in a town where maybe there's a lot more crime? crime? We moved exactly for that reason. Right. Because the crime where we were living was absolutely terrible. We were living in a very metropolitan city, mm. Lincoln, mm. and crime was terrible. Mm. I mean, one time they had a power cut. Mm. And it was a terrible power cut. Mm. And we went to buy barrel. I went on my own to buy some batteries for the for, for the house, for a man's spare ones. Mm. And when I went outside, the abuse I was met with, and they threw things at me, buttons. Uh, there was a fistful of buttons in my face. What, young, uh, youngsters? Youngsters, uh, ranging <laughs> from about six to 16. I've caught up with reformed criminal Tony Beckton in South London. Very fine hair. But... He's here to read from his autobiography, Beyond Reason. Um, Tony. All right. Tony, hi, it's Abigail. Hello. Hi, from, from the publishers. Oh, what? Sorry. How are you, Tony? Hi, you all right? You're all right. Well, to tell you the truth, it's not the sort of place I would normally come. Unless I was robbing it. <laughs> Get on the ground! Don't be an hero! Down, down! Get out! Get down on the floor! 
you know, something yeah. like that. But I don't do that no more. Mm. So, uh, here we are. Uh, is this okay? It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, but don't worry, they've given you a microphone. Um, would, would you rather do it at Look the left turn or...? <laughs> that is good, isn't it? You like it? <laughs> the boy, um, in Early D has his own take on rising no? crime levels. I mean, even the Queen, right? Her Majesty the Queen. You know when um, they kill up that girl there uh, 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 in, in foreign? The Diana, then kill up the girl in foreign, innit? In France. In foreign, foreign, in foreign land. In foreign land in France, yeah. In foreign land, them kill her, right? right? Yeah. Now, the Queen herself, Her Majesty the Queen, say this. She said, there are certain forces throughout the land which I does not knows or controls them. That's what the Queen said. She said that? The Queen, Her Majesty said that. Word for word. She said, there are certain forces throughout the land which I does not knows or controls them, mm. right? That's what the Queen said. Yeah, I really don't think the Queen would say something like that. Oh, you mean? I know you're probably paraphrasing in your, in your, in your no, no, speech. No, no, no. Listen, but, listen, But she would not mm. say... Singular, singular. Who are the forces at work? Listen to me. The boy you, thems? The boy them might have something to do with it, right? But mm. I'm telling you this much, yeah? Watch what you're talking about, right? And tell me, said the Queen never say what I know she said because the Queen she could illuminate you like that. The Queen doesn't like Gary Bellamy. She doesn't like this program. She could the illuminate queen will you. Kill In fact, Gary you better, I'm telling you this much, yeah. Her Majesty, she said, chapter and verse, she say there are certain forces throughout the lands which I does not knows or controls them. That's what the Queen said. So you blame the state of crime in this country on the Queen. My name is Tony Bixon, and I'm going to read from my book, Girls of Reason. I was born in Deptford, in a flat above a shop in the high street. My dad knew enough on the market. He got hold of it bit by bit, stall by stall. A bung here, a black eye there. People did what they were told they got to dig. Nice one, Dad. They're only mugs. When I was eight, my dad drew a 12 years at the old Bailey. He had a Saturday job, armed robbery. I had to grow up fast. I already had some pubes, and I practiced talking in a deep voice like Dad. A false beard, and I was all set. I tore through that market like a chicken with a firework up its ass. If people give me any lip, I jumped up and punched them in the bollocks. The women, what well, I made do was spit in their faces. It felt great. I was the king, and everyone else could piss off. The mum was shit compared to Dad. She got my nerves and started fussing round me. I started giving her a few clumps to keep her on her toes. She didn't like it, but what woman does like a dig? I had my rules, though. I only eat her during the week. I'll give her the weekends off to recover. Bring back hanging, mm. right? Make the punishment fit the crime, yeah? Yeah. Right? Make prison not an holiday camp, well, at least not for nonces, right? Right. Get women back in the kitchen and tell them to shut up, right? right? That's, that's just Sharia law. What's that, mate? Well, it's what the Muslims believe. I ain't a bleeding Muslim, mate. No, I ain't a Muslim, no, mate. No, I'm not saying you're a Muslim. I'm saying what you share saying? the same... What are you saying, then? I'm saying you share the same beliefs. What are you talking about? Sharia law Shut states... Shut up. Mate, I thought of it first, mate. That's... I thought of that. Why? Right? They've been thinking it for a thousand years. Yeah. What do you mean? I've been thinking about this, right, for a long time. A thousand years? No, but people like, you know, people like me with my views have been around for a long time, right? They don't mean we're Muslims. I'm not saying you're Muslim, I'm I saying you have Muslim. the same I'm opinion. not a Muslim. Shut up. I done right, you. Right, shut up. I don't... done you a bit there, though, didn't I? Shut up. Am I on this bollocks about I done you or anything like that? Shut up, right? Shut up. You don't like the truth, shut do up. you? I'm supposed to be professional, but you are like a big baby. You are in my van, right? So, shut up. When in Rome, do as the Rome do. Is crime bad in this part in, in Leicester? Is it is it a, is it bad up here? Crime is bad for people like you. For, but for Muslims, we don't do crime. You don't do crime. Muslims are not crime crime people. No. Why why is that? Because they're Muslim. Mm. So no Muslims c commit any crime whatsoever. No, we're Muslim. No. We're not allowed to do crime in Muslim. No. So how can we do crime? If you're Muslim, say you're not allowed to do crime. Mm. How can you Muslim do crime? No. Come on, so, so if we applied that rule to everyone else in this country and said you can't do crime, then there wouldn't be any crime. Exactly. So that's why they should all be Muslim. Right. You see, you people think all yeah. me people want is Sharia law in this country. Mm. That's all you think, isn't it? Not. You think all we want is Sharia law? No. No. You think? Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, honestly, I don't. You think we want Sharia law? You think we want? Do you think I want Sharia law? Ask me. Ask me. Well, do you want Sharia law? Yes, maybe. 
No, because that's exactly what I was being threatened. Fellow radio host Steve Goodall is unequivocal in who he blames for society's Thanks, ills. Thanks very much, Marion. I thought about it for a long time, actually, Gary. I thought mm. long and hard about it. Yeah. And do you know who I blame for crime in this country? I blame the liberal, trendy media lefties, right? What, what, why? Metaphorically, they're the people who break in, they oh. steal your stuff, they ransack your house, they do a metaphorical uh, poo uh, on the floor, they put your toothbrush in it, they take a, a metaphorical picture of it, they take the toothbrush out, they clean it metaphorically, put it back mm. in your bathroom and then send you a metaphorical picture. I'm not saying they actually do that, but the, 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 the liberal, trendy media types are responsible for crime in this country, Gary, because they won't clamp down on the actual miscreants, Gary. So, so who is actually doing it? Well, it's the Albanians, isn't it? So who do you blame for crime in this country? Well, I blame the criminals. Mm. I blame the criminals. I think it's the criminals' fault. And without the criminals, there would be no crime in the country. So I think what we should probably do is take all the people that commit crime, the criminals, mm. and take them away and put them in one place where they can be held away from the rest of society. And I'd be happy to see that in action. But we already have prisons. prisons. So, exactly. So do you, you're you know, saying that prisons aren't prison doing enough? enough? Is that what you're well, saying? we can see about that, can't we? And it will all be in tomorrow's papers, the prison debate. It's a debate that has gone on for years. Who will win, we don't know. But what we do know is that criminals are the source of all crime and something must be done. And I shan't say anything more of it. I've killed two men, well, four, and I've been involved one way or another in countless acts of extreme violence. I've spent 26 years in jails and mental hospitals, eight years of this time in solitary confinement. I ate the screws apart from Mr Banks. He treated me with respect, helped me with my hobby, ice sculpture. I can sculpt any animal. I did a bear once for Reggie Cray. He loved it, but it melted like my dreams of freedom. I also write poems and I do brass rubbing. I hope to get a job combining the two one day. What I do think would help British society is we, are, we, we have become a very lily-livered nation. We need national service. My husband was in the army. He went off, he raped his way across Europe, he murdered his way across Africa, mm. and he came back like a timid little mice. It did him with a world of good. Men will be men, boys will be boys. He came back and he never bothered me again. A lot of people say if we brought back a national service, that would solve some of the country's problems. Well, I think that, uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, there are elements, uh, young men who mm. enjoy uh, violence, uh, bloodshed, warfare, and, and uh, the ability to kill at mm. will. And, you know, we need people like that in the modern British Army. I think what, what Mike's trying to say there is that that type of character doesn't exist in the modern British Army. Exactly. We need aggressive, uh, violent young men who are prepared to kill, and there aren't any in the modern British Army. Exactly. What Britain needs is a dictator. Do you really think we need a dictator? It's talking absolute rot. Of course not. I, we I need would to be told. I would agree. We I would agree. We need to fight. We need. To, there's no people, fight. But a lot of people. To be fair, a lot of people of your generation. They fight against something. They need some, no one does anything. A man is not a man until he has shed blood. Have you shed blood, Mr. Bellamy? Should be fired Have you noise? killed? I've cut myself, but I've never shed. Like, I've not shed other people's blood. Well, then you are not a but man. But why? Why would? Why man. would we want to shed? If a man looked at you askance, would you shoot him in the face? I'd have shot her. You in the should. Face. I'd you have shot, shot her in the face, and she'd have shot me in the face. But we, for my beliefs, I'd have shot her, and for her beliefs, she'd have shot me. Well, I did shoot you in the face. But you, you there was no difference afterwards. Did she really shoot you in the face? Once. Mildly. Now, you're rappers. How much do you think kind of like gangster rap music influences crime? Like it's just words. Words can't make crime. It's like poetry. Like what should I say? Uh, like spear crime was big in the medieval times. Mm. Should I say William Wordsmith was responsible for a spear crime? Is that what you're trying to say? So what I'm saying is, like you know, as younger people, you listen to music, and if it's encouraging you to go out and shoot people, you glamorise, you know, your bitches and your and your hoes and your. You see, what you understand is there was bitches and hoes before we started making those songs. Exactly. No, but what I'm trying to. Now, what if they are bitches and hoes? What about that one? Exactly. What about if they are? What about if they're hoeing and bitching? Mm. And we can't do anything about that. We're just commentating exactly. on the hoeing and bitching. Exactly. Commentary. It's commentary. It's actually yeah. social commentary. We're, We're just, just remarking. What I mean. But what I'm saying is that like, my idol, for example, growing up was Pat Cash. 
Who's that brother? He's a, he was a tennis player, Australian tennis player, won, won Wimbledon. And I thought, oh, I like him. I like what he does. I'll learn a bit of tennis. So I went and played tennis every week. I gave up because I wasn't very good. I had not a bad uh, backhand. But the point is, I was influenced by him and I wanted to become a tennis player. Now, you listen to P. Diddy, you listen to the other, the other guys, the other rappers. He's what, would you say this to Buck? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't say it to him. You wouldn't say it to Beethoven Ace. Why are we getting into all this? Okay, what football team do you support? The Gunners. Gunners well, there you go, see? Gun crime. In prison, everything is a weapon. Pens, socks, cheese, soap. I've seen a man suffocated by a warm nan bread. Once I was attacked by a man armed with a piece of stale Christmas cake. I defended myself with half of a Twix. Bring back national service. I, I was in the army. I was a professional soldier for many years. I mm. just was just old enough to make it to the D-Day landings. And um, it's an awful, awful thing, war. What do we say? What do we say? It's wrong for a young man to to attack and kill someone on, on, on the streets of their own country, but it's perfectly all right mm. to send them abroad and kill, mm. kill the young people of some foreign nation. Mm. Why? Are their lives worth less than ours? Because mm. that's what national service is. It's joining the army and going off to, 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 to kill people. What are we saying? That the life of mm. ten young Frenchmen equals young, one young British mm. chap? Or, or, or in Iraq, what are we saying? You know, Twenty dead Arabs equals one mm. dead British Tommy. I mean, it's mm. this ghastly mathematics of war, you know. And then what happens when, when, when the French are, are, are fighting on our side? We're saying then the French life is equal to the British, but they're both superior to the Germans or the, you know, the Hottentots or whoever, routinely gone and slaughtered out in Africa. That's not a solution to anything, is it? No. What, four dead Belgians equals, I don't know, two dead Australians? Mm. Or, 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 or six dead Russians is equal to, to, to three dead, um, what would you say? Uh, maybe, well, uh, po po Polish? Polish, yes. You like this? 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 I've got to do the wait, questions. Wait, 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 listen, no, no, I've got to say something. Serious point. I've got to do the questions, though. Are you listening? Yeah. They we do the questions. No, like, in my school, yeah. there were 96 yeah. languages yeah. spoken, right? Listen to this, this is important. And it was beautiful. I haven't learned to say fuck off in every single Oh, I thought you were going to make a valid like, point. Do you know what I can say? Learn to. Tatty Chew So. That means suck my balls. Oh, oh my. Tatty Chew So. Tatty Chew So. Tatty Chew So. Tatty Chew So. All right. Mark drove a small Bedford van out the side turn, broadside in the security truck. It swung round. There was a terrible sound of ripping metal. And then we was on the street, pumped up. I smashed the window and hurled a full tin of white paint into the driver's eyes. Meanwhile, Ray smashed the window on the other side and lobbed a full-grown rhesus monkey into the cab. All hell broke loose. The drivers were shitting themselves. What with the monkey, which we applied with cider, and the paint, plus our shat, and it was all over in a flesh. Let me tell you this much now. I respect the Queen, right? I respect Her Majesty, right? One love all the while to Her Majesty. One love coming from the heart, right? Mr. Lyle, soldier of the Queen, right? Then I not talk about no, nothing about that, but I'm telling you what the Queen said. She said there are certain forces throughout the lands which I does not know or controls them. But if somebody you... tell me that, then I know what's going on. Ellie, can, can I ask you a question? Yeah, man. Are the boy them, the police? Yes, sir, we are talking about, yes. Ah, oh, right, I get it now. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know you, Ellie. Singular, we love you, you know. <laughs> yeah, me love that. Don't... Sorry, I didn't mean it to be that hard. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be that hard. What happened to you? I thought it was just a bit of play. I'm stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand no, 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 no. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Listen to me, yeah. Yeah. Don't you ever come in my no, 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 come no. in my yard, yeah. Mm. Don't you ever come in my yard. I won't come in your yard. I slap me in my face oh, again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah? I thought it was just a bit yeah? of fun. Look at my face. That. Look at him in high. I did it because you eh? did it to me. Eh? I thought it was a bit eh? of fun. I eh? it was... Don't you ever come in my yard and slap me in my face again. Sit down. Sit down. Sorry. Chop. We sped off, switched cars in Deptford, drove to Sidcup, 
change cars again, bolted down to Brighton and switched cars. We then drove to Hove and switched cars. We drove back to London. We changed cars again and split up. They're, they're extensions, aren't they? Well done, Gary. Yeah, yeah. I keep saying, I keep telling like, Michaela to get them because she's got very, very thin hair. Really? She's got very thin hair. Oh, 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 Are there any answers to the problems in British society? But, but what is the question? <laughs> is there an answer to the problems in British society? I have a key to this, you know, and uh, the key is this. Uh, there's going to be a celebration of uh, various alternative belief structures, uh, not just mine, and uh, I would wonder perhaps if you would uh, come as a guest uh, to the Mind, Soul, Body Festival of Enlightenment, uh, Soul and the Body. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Where is it? Well, I'm not going to tell you where it is. I think I want you to feel your own way there and find it. If you truly want to, you will get there. Well, I could just Google it. Well, it's near Kidderminster. The old Bill brought in animal experts and after a lot of coaxing and bananas, the monkey ended up identifying two of us and we got tugged. I believe the monkey went into the witness protection programme. Don't worry, we'll get it. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm an animal. I'm a man. I'm Tony Beckton. People ask me, am I a rebellious agitator? I honestly do not know what that word means. Hey, you are right? okay. I'll come back for a bit, all right? Just... Can I help? Oh, just for a bit, OK? Oh, you can they come? No, no. What are you giving me a gift? At my house. At oh, my house. What's she doing? Oh, 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 what are you doing? I'm the undead. I'm dead. Oh, I've got piss on my back. It's horrible. Oh, don't look, Gary. I'm a lady. <laughs> don't watch your lady piss. series of Bellamy's People is on the BBC iPlayer. BBC Two has all the latest from the Winter Olympics right after Newsnight next. You can hear more from Mr Khan on the Adil Ray Show tomorrow morning from 7 on BBC Asian Network. How much would you be prepared to pay for your everyday shopping? Because the environmental costs could be extreme. This used to be the home to thousands of orangutans, but just look at it now. Panorama investigates the secret ingredient that's driving a species to the brink of extinction. Monday at 8.30 on BBC One.
Newsnight now on BBC Two with Gav.